Welcome back. This time we're going to be doing something a little different with our friend the baby dino. You see him here, finished drawing. It's ready to be scanned, cleaned up a little bit further, and colored. We're going to do some little digital goodies on it today. I'm going to go through the procedure that I generally use to get the art clean and ready for coloring. There are a lot of different ways to approach this. Uh, this is simply the technique that I've grown most comfortable with. Uh, if you've got any comments on the screenshot process I'm using to show this, I'd be delighted to hear it if you have any suggestions to make this better. First of all, um, the original drawing I've got here has a live area of something like 17 inches by 12 inches. It's way too big to be scanned in one shot. So what I've done here is I've made two scans, uh, making sure to scan with some overlap and doing my best to maintain the same angle of the art in each scan. I scan everything into Adobe Photoshop. That's the application in which I'm going to be working here. I'm going to drop one over the other and I'm going to adjust them to fit exactly into, into one picture. So I first decide which one is going to be my base. Uh, I'm going to need to expand the canvas size on the base, making sure that the background is set for white I try to make sure my canvas is going to be big enough to accommodate what I'll be dropping in with room for moving, adjusting. So in this case, I'm expanding the canvas out to the right to 17 inches. Uh, and at this point, I suggest you do what I always do at this point and hit the save. Okay, so now I'm ready to drop the right-hand side art. Let's call this the moving art onto the left, and we'll call the left the base art. What I try to do is isolate some specific detail on the moving art that I can place my cursor on and drag it to that same detail on the base art. If I need to further adjust the moved line art to line it up, I've got that as a pivot point to rotate or otherwise orient. This time it only required a little bit of nudging and tweaking to line up perfectly, and I'm going to hit save again. You can see where the edge of my scan produced a shadow, made it a little bit darker there. Well, I've got that overlap, so I can just remove that part that isn't blending in well. That's pretty easy to do. I just select it on the top layer, and then I delete it. And once again, I hit save. Now I've learned my lesson on these things. You save as often as possible. Anyway, so when I'm totally happy with this combination, I flatten the image. And then I save again. Now this image is going to need to be cleaned up further. I would ordinarily crop it first to my workable size and remove extraneous areas so I don't need to think about them. This time I can tell it's not going to be causing any great problems so I'm just going to adjust the tones first and then I'm going to crop. The first thing I do is I adjust the levels to remove as much of the mid-tones as possible. I want those whites to be as white as I can get them without starting to eat into the tone of the line itself. If the, lone, the line excuse me, isn't totally dark, I'm okay with that because I like keeping the quality of the line as a pencil line. So I'm going to make that a little darker, but I don't have to go all the way black on that because I'm going to lose a little too much detail if I do that. I might use a few of the other Photoshop tools to adjust the lights and the darks as well, but mainly I'm going to work with levels here. Now as I said, I usually first crop the image to the workable size before adjusting the tones, but in this case I waited until afterward and then I'm going to crop the picture, as you see right here, to my desired live area. The last things I need to address in the cleanup are any imperfections in the line art. And so I can now go in and clean them up in Photoshop. And then I'm also going to look for any gray artifacts remaining in the white areas that need to be cleared. That would be a problem if I didn't get rid of those. I first zoom into the art as far as needed and use the eraser tool to clean up whatever I'm not totally happy with. I like to leave a certain quality of the pencil line on the drawing, and I keep this in mind while I'm working. Now, in the steps to come, as I said, any artifacts remaining from the scan are going to be a problem, so I do my best to clear them out. I want as clean a white as possible behind there. I use the magic wand and other selection tools to select individual white areas one at a time, and then I hit delete with my background color on white. Uh, when I'm pretty clear about that, and I'm pretty happy with that, I go back over at high zoom, I look over any imperfections, anything I find, I clean them up with whatever tool works best. So there we go, I'm double checking the art now until I'm satisfied, and yeah, it's ready to go to color. So now I check the crop size. 
Sometimes I can reduce the size at this point. It'll give me a smaller file to work with, which is always a little easier. But in this case, I'm pretty happy with this working size, and so I'm going to leave it. And there we go. We're all ready to bring our baby dino over and give him some color. And that'll be our next step.